Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Anyone have any good creepy stories from your school? Don't have to be based on fact. Maybe it's an old legend or some weird kid that went to it. Anything as long as it involves the school you went to. Mine doesn't have much. It was built in the 50s, though. Late 70s, early 80s. Kid in the musical. My high school's famous for putting on good ones. He's one of the leads and is great at it. Totals his parents' car. One year later, driving his parents' new car. Goes over train tracks. There's a lot in my town that are still used today. Car stops for some reason. Won't start again. Train starts coming. People try to get him out of the car. Refuses as he doesn't want to total his parents' car again. Tries to start. It doesn't and the train runs him over, killing him. To this day, he is said to haunt the auditorium at my school. Haven't seen a ghost. But my friends have said they've heard people whisper to them and can't find out who. There's also graffiti in a place no one can get to that says, Dude's name, live. There was also a self-termination in the auditorium in the 60s because the person didn't get the lead in the musical. They also supposedly haunt the stage, too. Both of these stories were told to me, so I don't know if they're real or not. I have seen the graffiti, though. Again, my high school is famous for its musical program, and I was in it, which is where I heard these stories. I have a whole bunch of good ones. For background, my school was basically a reform school of sorts, though they didn't call it that. No one wanted to be there. A few people committed serious crimes to avoid going back. A few years before I arrived, a couple of kids had ran away and got hit by a train. No one really knows if it was a self-termination pact or an accident, but it spawned most of the haunting rumors. There was one staff member there who worked the night shift. He was one of the nicest guys I knew, and while some of the staff were downright sadistic, he was always chatty and in a good mood, so one night he told us stories of the weirdest things that had happened during his shifts. He told us about one time how he was walking around the campus shortly after dark and he saw a face in the dining hall window. He assumed that someone had snuck out and was playing around, so he went in to check on it. When he got in, he heard laughter coming from somewhere but couldn't see anyone. He walked all around the main area, but it was empty. Then he saw that the light was on in the kitchen off to the side, so he went in to see if the kids were in there. When he got there, he still couldn't see anyone but he heard more laughter and scuffling from the main area. He turned the light off, and when he went back to check, he saw that all the chairs at the head table, about 20 of them, had been pulled out. Apparently, he noped out of there pretty quick after. The second story he told was about the gym. There were two gym teachers, and they would get in really early in the morning on weekends since one group had gym at like 7 a.m., and they needed to make sure everything was in order and probably do their own workout when it was empty. This night staff guy decided he'd go and have a nice early morning chat with them. Well, they all brought coffee and sat down in the office in the gym, but after a couple of minutes, they all heard a huge crash that lasted for like a minute, exactly as though all the weights were crashing down. They all ran into the weight room, but there was no one there, and the weights were all back in place. For this one, we asked the gym guys, and they confirmed it too. The other time was even weirder. There was one guy who kept complaining of a long shadow at the foot of his bed that kept him from sleeping. Everyone else in the room saw it too. Apparently it was just a human-shaped shadow that just sometimes moved around but always ended up at the foot of this guy's bed. Eventually, after hearing about these complaints, they legitimately called in a priest to perform an exorcism. I'd consider it a rumor, but the person who I heard this from was actually the priest who was talking to the guy whose bed it was. The final major one was the train. In the middle of the night, there'd be a train sometimes. It sounded like it was going right by you, but the only people who heard it were people who'd been awake beforehand for some reason. Like it would never wake you up, but you'd hear it if you happened to be up at like 3 a.m. There was no train track nearby, but there the old one that the kids had died on had been torn down just a couple of years before and the kids who died had been hit by a train at around the same time you'd hear it. Well, I'm nearing the cap for a double post, so I'll end it here. 
There were a bunch of other little things that happened, but those were the main ones. Be me. Be in 12th grade. Have a spare period. Use it to relax in a sort of side hall area. There's never any light except for natural light coming in through the windows. There's carpeting and benches there because some of the smaller, less popular cliques of students eat lunch there all the time. Reading some science fiction. Laying on my back. Using my jacket as padding and my backpack as a pillow. Dude with bald head peers around the corner. Look over the top of the book. Ignore it and go back to reading. Look over the top of the book again a few minutes later. Same bald dude still leaning around the corner. I have a spare, man. I like this place so I read it here. No reply. Whatever. Back to reading. Nothing more that day. A few weeks later, same place and situation. Feel a sense of being watched. Look over the book. Same dude in the same position. Hey, still reading. Am I in the way or something? No reply. Whatever. Back to reading. This happened several times. Never thought much of it because I was always considered weird. My last year there. I took a couple extra years to get into some classes I hadn't been able to before. A friend tells me about a janitor that apparently died when he was in his 40s and loved the school. Looked him up. Dude I've been seeing for the last few years looks exactly like him. He's been dead since about a decade before I was there. B-16. A normal day. Wake up, have breakfast, put on uniform and what have you. Walk to school. Have this weird feeling, not too weird, but difficult to describe. I think I can only describe it as being like that feeling you get when the weather changes, if that makes sense to anyone. Anyway, I get to school and there's no one there. Weird. I check the time, literally five minutes until school begins. Figure that it's just a coincidence or something that lots of people were late and I just happened to not run into anybody. Sit down in the homeroom until the bell rings. No one comes, what the hell? Walk out the door and head to the lockers to grab my stuff. I figure I must have accidentally come on a holiday or something, grab stuff and start going home. Walk past door to my homeroom. People noises coming from it. What the hell? Open the door. Detention for being late for the millionth time. Great. My grandparents would call something like that the glam. Apparently taking off your clothes and putting them on inside out would break its hold. I have no supernatural experiences apart from this. 2004. I'm 14 years old. Ouija boards have become a popular topic around school. Kids start making Ouija boards for fun out of paper during classes and on breaks, etc. After a few days of this, I witnessed a group of kids getting seriously disciplined by the teacher in my history class for messing around with one they made. One of the girls, let's call her Charlotte, laughs it off and says to me that it really works and that she is going to a friend's house after school to do a real one her friend bought online. Her friend, let's call him Nathan, lives in a council estate and someone hung themselves in his bedroom before his family moved in. Charlotte says that she, Nathan, and her friends are planning to try to talk to the man that committed self-termination there, K.JPG. The next day I've forgotten all about it and am handing in a form at the school reception. I walk past the auditorium and stop dead. An entire section of the stage is charcoaled black like it's been on fire and the curtains are burnt rags. Go to history class and neither Charlotte nor Nathan are there. There are quite a few police around and everyone is talking about arson attacks in the drama and science departments that happened overnight. WTF.JPG By the end of the day, Charlotte and her friends still aren't in school. Most teachers don't seem to know much about what's happened, but those that do are acting shifty and secretive. Finally, in the final class of the day, it is announced that Charlotte is missing, didn't return home the night before, and that her parents are looking for her. Everyone immediately connects the dots from the previous day's events and asks about Nathan and her other friends. Shifty French teachers does nothing but scowl and say, those boys are in a lot of trouble. What the hell dot JPG? Charlotte eventually turned up, but it took three days. No one really knew what had happened at first, but it did all come out in the end. I found out from a girl sitting next to me in the French class who kind of knew Charlotte's group and also knew the headmistress's daughter in the year below us. It had done something like this. The whole group of friends had sat around in Nathan's room doing the Ouija, where the man had self-terminated himself. Nothing at first, but eventually they contacted him. To every question they asked him, all he would violently reply was, F you, I will kill you. 
for literally every question. This went on for a while and most of the group were upset and scared and went home. This left Charlotte, Nathan and one other boy still messing with the board, asking dumb questions and getting the same reply. Charlotte was quite hysterical and frightened at this point and had stopped playing, but because she was closer to the boys than the others, she stayed and watched. The final question, the question that caused them to end the session, and the only one answered adequately was, will you burn down the school? The reply, yes. Charlotte walked home late at night not to be seen for three days. I never found out where she had been, no one seemed to know, and I'm not sure she knew herself. The other two boys were arrested by police the next day. There was footage on the security cameras of them sitting quietly for hours at a time on the tennis courts and smashing chemicals and lab equipment in the science department during the night. They and their parents claimed they were at home in front of the television the entire time. The footage showed the stage and curtains in the drama department igniting all on their own. B-12. Staying at my school for a wake-a-thon, an event where we stay up late. Walk out from the gym to the main entranceway. All the hallways are dark and spooky. Me, being me of course, I had to look down the hallways. Looks left. A painting hung on the wall by a nail fell perfectly flat onto the floor just as I looked. Thought nothing of it. Later one of our supervisors came out. She was angry, wanting to know who knocked over the painting in the hall. Tell her, with the straightest poker-faced expression. I watched it fall on its own. Everyone got very quiet and started whispering to each other. This hasn't been the first of these incidents. Many people, including the teachers, has had some sort of weird experience at that school. Back then my college was a hospital and the annex building was a morgue, but it got renovated. Be me. Be a student assistant. Be at the professor's office at around 7 p.m. College closes at 9 p.m. Talking to students who have issues with their schedule. Finally, alone. The teacher comes in. I know her. Told me that I should go home now. Told her I'm still finishing up and I'll go home. Said she'll wait for me because we had the same transpo. We're kinda close. She had a different desk really far away from me. I'm arranging papers when suddenly I heard someone calling my name in a girl's voice. I thought it was my professor. Yes ma'am? She poked her head out and asked me what's going on. I said it was nothing. Later on we were about to lock the office. I heard it again, this time I clearly heard it was my professor's voice. What is it, ma'am? Are you high or something? She said. Went out of the school with a couple of students and professors. Told her what happened a while ago. Suddenly her face looked serious. Yeah, I know that. I've been hearing that since my first day here. Not the exact words. She told me that she's been talking to the ghost when she's alone. Are you kidding me? Dot gif. Next month resigned as a student assistant. Never talk to the professor again. We've met a lot of times, but I've been avoiding her. No wonder she's sometimes alone. My middle school was insanely old, and a ton of creepy things happened there. In the bathroom with friends. Four of us are in the bathroom. We start hearing this weird scraping sound. It's coming from the ceiling and is moving. We follow the sound to the corner of the bathroom. We begin to hear crying from the ceiling corner. Sounds like a child of some sort. One person rushes to get a teacher. The teacher comes in and hears the same crying. We get a janitor with a ladder to assist. The crying keeps growing faint and then louder again. Think someone is somehow trapped in the ceiling. Small crowd gathers. Janitor climbs the ladder to the ceiling, removes some ceiling tiles and sticks his head in. Flashlight in hand, he looks around in the ceiling. There's nothing here. Everyone is freaked out. Crying stopped. He puts the tiles back in the ceiling and climbs down. We hear giggling now coming from the same spot. It's definitely coming from the ceiling. Teachers look deeply disturbed. Teachers ask everyone to leave the bathroom. Only teachers and janitors are in the bathroom now. They come out nearly an hour later and tell everyone it's fine. They locked the bathroom and kept it that way for months. We ended up having to use a bathroom on another floor. They kept that one bathroom locked the entire rest of the time I was there at that school. Teachers wouldn't tell anyone anything about it. When we asked what the noises were, they would say, the bathroom is being remodeled, but no one ever remodeled it. They kept it locked off, and for the first few weeks, they even put stuff in front of the door like boxes and crates. My town used to be a military base. 
When it became a town, the remaining structures were preserved but turned into a junior high school. There were many stories, not rumors, that ghosts haunt the land and the buildings, many saying that the spirits belong to soldiers who still think they are on duty. A rumor circulated that on Friday the 13th you can see the spirit of a girl who self-terminated herself in a hallway. You could even hear footsteps if you were all alone. The most haunted area on campus is said to be the underground bowling alley. It's agreed that the structure inside is unsafe for anyone to enter, so only a lucky few both student and teacher have seen the inside and even less have come back with a scary story to tell. However, everyone has seen the outside of it. Since it's underground, a staircase leading down is the only way in. That staircase hasn't been cleaned in decades. The mold and grime has certainly built up and there's always a general unpleasant feeling one gets just looking down the staircase. Forgot to mention that the band room that a member of the military band was accidentally locked inside when they were moving bases. It is said that the poor guy couldn't find a way out and had spent the last of his time playing his tuba in the closet. Directors and students have reported hearing instruments, including a tuba, being played when no one else is there. The local high school also has its fair share of ghostly tales. Before the reconstruction, one experience that I'm jealousy upset I missed out on was experiencing the ghostly footsteps and scream of a girl who was killed in the library hallway. The story goes that she had stayed long after school studying in the hallways when an adult male had made his way onto campus and murdered the girl in that hallway. Her last moments have been witnessed by others, years after her death. The school itself, especially now that it was rebuilt, doesn't have many more ghost stories to tell of. What does, however, is the school auditorium. It's sizable, fits over 2,000 people, and you can bet that when it was being constructed there were a few… accidents. There has been at least one confirmed death where a worker working above the ceiling fell to his death, over 100 feet and landed back first on fixed chairs. It's not known if his ghost, if it exists, sticks to a certain pattern of behavior however many have reported that the light room, which is the only way to access the area where the worker fell, is messed with by a ghost. An experience of mine was being sent to that room to turn on the stage lights and no matter what button or switch I flicked nothing turned on until someone else came up and was successful the first time. Others who have been in charge of the lights say that if the ghost notices you coming up, the lights will turn on or off by themselves, sort of like a favor for you, favor for. Others who have been sent to the light room have reported the actual light inside that room not working at all, only to see the light flicker on and off by itself when they've left the room and stand on stage. A friend of mine who became my partner in setting up the stage came back spooked and sweaty when he said he saw the lights flicker on, then off, and when they came back on again, a dark figure stood in the window, only for the light to turn on and off again and had vanished. There are also two notable self-terminations that happened in the building. In no order, the first was a student who had tied a rope over his neck and jumped off a utility platform and towards the backstage. Eerily, though the noose had been taken down, it is said that the rope that hangs there now is still the same rope. Students, including myself, who were both lucky and brave enough to go up that platform have felt cold spots, the coldest being in a corner where the student was said to have spent his last moments before jumping. The most haunted room in the entire building is the photography room. It's one of those old-school photography rooms with the tinted light and pans for devolving pictures. The photography room has two of those rooms, a newer one by the door and an older one that was damaged in a fire towards the back. In that room, a female student committed self-termination and her presence definitely remains. Simply stepping into that room, you encounter a cold spot. Others have said to have felt extreme heat at times, both temperatures becoming stronger when you stand in the middle of the room. People have reported being tapped, hearing extra footsteps and even being followed when in that room or in the storage room across from it. A terrifying event occurred when the high school marching band's drum major had the key to open that room. It was said that an epic stash of candy was hidden there, and he wanted to check it out with some friends before he graduated. I was following behind them when suddenly the door, which was very heavy, slammed and locked shut, separating our group into two. The drum major and two of his friends were stuck inside the photography room while I, a friend and the drum major's girlfriend were stuck outside. We tried hard to open the door, however nothing worked. When the drum major had tried to unlock the door from his side, the lock would lock right back when an attempt was made. After we got the director to give up her second set of keys, the door opened normally. However, for the three that had been stuck inside, we had come too late. Whatever they saw or experienced in there could be seen on their face. 
Neither of those three ever returned to that corridor. We had a dilapidated school right next to ours that scared the hell out of me and my friends when we were kids. Defunct school is in very bad shape next to mine. Kids started making up stories, bathrooms lights always on, kids trapped inside, faces in the windows. Friends and I got inside. Uneasy feeling but nothing strange so far. Small clown sculpture next to a window. Sculpture was creepy so we didn't even bother touching it. Heading to the main staircase. Suddenly a box rolls down the main stairs. Massive freak out and we leave as fast as we could. We always thought it was someone pulling a prank on us but it was scary. And for the sake of making it spoopy, we didn't mention that when spreading the story. Also the clown disappeared and a chair was stuck in the window bars. Turns out my older brother got inside after overhearing our stories and grabbed the clown to see our reaction the next day. A few days later, my parrot pushed the clown to the ledge of the table and made it fall breaking the sculpture. It's been more than 10 years and we haven't experienced weird stuff, so it's safe to assume it wasn't haunted. Something strange that happened at school. This happened at my old school I went to in Florida. I was around 10 or 11 or 12 at the time, so the memories of it are a little foggy. But now that I've refreshed my memory of it, I decided I wanted to post it here. I've never been on 4chan, and I heard about it for a while, but never went on it because I didn't have much knowledge about it, and never really cared about it. I had a few real friends I had in school who I lost touch with after my parents transferred me to online school, pre-plague, at the end of middle school. On to the story now. This school had a very large PE backyard with a small baseball court and a huge open field that we did all different kinds of activities at, but most times we ran which I liked the most. The school was big too. On the left was a big forest that was fenced for obvious reasons, and on the right was a town neighborhood. I lived further away from the school, no longer than a five-minute drive. And straightforward was a clearing in a hedge wall that me and my babysitter would sometimes go behind and explore after school. One day, we decided to go further than we usually went, and I'll describe what the place looked like to the best I could remember. But it was this really long field that went straight, while the width was still not as big. I think it was meant for a road, but no road was ever built. At least not that I know of. Maybe it was in construction, but we never saw any construction equipment, vehicles, etc. One place that always was kind of weird was this carver out path through dense trees. It wasn't a dirt path, but an overgrown grass path that led to a really large lake where that neighborhood was. Whenever we walked there to get, we always both heard this same branch cracking. It wasn't loud, but not quiet either. It never was full-on creepy and can easily be explained away, but I thought I would mention since it always felt just a little off. While continuing down the field on the right side, it led to a clearing and a road in the woods. That's where me and my babysitter both felt like an actual strange feeling. Not a presence, just a really odd feeling. The road was in the woods, and there were no cars. And that wasn't strange since a lot of cars probably didn't pass by them and we both stood at the side of the road, not directly on the concrete, but on the cut grass. And then out of nowhere, I hear just fast running and stomping on leaves from to the right of me and my babysitter heard it to and out of the woods from the other side, not directly in front by to my right, there was either two or three men that just booked it straight across the road away from us. They ran in a weird way to where they were flaring their arms and legs around, but made no noise at all, just the sound of their running. They wore either white pants or black pants, with a white shirt or black I didn't remember. But as we see that we both just book it out of there and back the way we can, which scarily enough is where those guys were running into those woods, but we still ran that way because the school was closer and it was basically the only way out, and the other way down the road was far and weren't sure what was that way. I remember looking back to where that small path was and I thought I heard their footsteps coming from those trees, but it could have just been our footsteps since I didn't hear any trees or branches breaking or snapping, but we were running on full adrenaline and we just got out of there. We darted it across the open field and she looked back first and nobody was there. It was silent aside from the soft wind. It was scary and I was walking backwards as I also looked back. We got back home and both told my older sister about it but after that didn't really think about it that much. But that's not where the story ends, because a year later it happened again. Nighttime, my dad is driving me to get pizza and we decide to stop at the school and eat the pizza outside the car in the cool breeze. 
It was night time and was kind of cold, but we decided to go out to the playground in the middle of the night because my dad is just like that, and he was always awesome, and we did random things together whenever we didn't work. We were hanging out on the swings, it was really silent, and the school is right next to us, basically, and when he was pushing me on the swing, I saw behind a tree, one of those same guys from over a year ago. I keep looking at it, and my dad doesn't notice because he's pushing me, and the figure that stands there, and I get a better look at it now while still being pretty dark since there are no lights on except for one or two street lamps and my dad's car headlights that were on and the guy was I suppose one of the three or two I saw that day just staring at me wearing white pants and a black shirt and I saw he was also wearing some sort of leather jacket his hair was kind of long and had it covering his face and it obscured it and I was freaking out at this moment now since I had been staring at it for a few seconds now and so I pointed at and told my dad if he sees it and sure as hell when he turns he can see it I got off the swing and my dad started to walk towards it slightly until I heard a really small noise emit from the figure and it just disappeared behind the tree. At the time I wasn't connecting the figure to the guys I saw a year ago since I could barely remember it at the time and my dad stepped back and we just anxiously got back into the car and drove home. While looking out my window I saw another figure standing near one of the big slides, not staring at me back at the swing I was on. That sent actual chills up my spine and was the most terrifying thing I saw when I was younger. About a month later, while at P.E. in the field and running with a few friends, I stared out into the distance where the forest was, and while it could have been my imagination, I thought I saw a person standing there. Not exactly sure if it was one of those figures I saw, but it was kind of creepy. Then on another day, while baseball was happening, me and a friend were talking about stuff and didn't join the baseball game and we're hiding, even though we were at the very top of the metal seats and everyone could see us, but hey bros be bros. And I turned around for a second and I looked at that clearing where I used to go with my babysitter and that's when I connected the figure with the ones I saw at the playground with my dad a month ago. And I made that connection because I saw another one of them just standing in that gate clearing barely visible but there. And I tried to ignore it but I kept looking at it for like five minutes while talking with my friend before it suddenly was gone. The second to last of these weird people, me and my babysitter decide to go back to that little path place for one final time, and it would be because we were too terrified to go back there again after. While I never saw any of those people while being there, I again heard that little snap of a branch. While looking around, I saw a little torn piece of paper. It was so small it was about the size of like half a finger. I picked it up and there was nothing on it, expect for a word that was faded, and since most of the page was cut off, I couldn't exactly tell what it said, but what it could have said was, girl lesson, it was freaky, and I put it down and we just left after that and never looked back. The last time I ever saw those people back was about two weeks later with my babysitter, while we were walking around the neighborhood, taking photos for her Snapchat or something I don't remember. And while walking, I saw them for the final time, three of them just standing where that road was, looking at us, I pointed, and my babysitter saw it, and one of them started crawling around in a zigzag manner, and we just got out of there. I looked back once, but we were too far away to see them anymore. Five days later, one of the kids from another class goes missing, and she was never found again. I didn't know her, and I don't even remember her name. Three years go by, and I never see those people again. I transfer to online school, and nothing else has happened since. My school had half-day classes, so there were two sections. I was good friends with someone from the AM section. I was from the PM section, so I often talked to her when we bump into each other. So she started telling me something about taking selfies with her three to four other classmates. And when they were done, they looked at the album and browsed through them until they saw one which had this unexplainable figure of a man who looked like he was joining them. They all wondered about the photo but insisted on keeping it since the shot was good and the figure wouldn't be seen unless you looked deeper into it. And the next day during science class, I think, the unexplainable happened. We had a third floor with only two classrooms and they were at the second farthest room, while the room nearest to the stairs was occupied by the lower year. Well here's the thing. During the lecture someone knocked at the door. Three times. Now she, my AM period friend, said that everyone looked at the door, expecting somebody to open it and show up. But guess what? The person who knocked didn't open the door. Her classmate who sat nearest to the door then opened it, only to see no one there. 
The teacher asked who knocked while the guy peeked over the hallway, who only shrugged as he didn't see no one else. But the most surprising thing was that the door from the other classroom opened too, and someone was peeking outside as well. The lower year student asked them, or more accurately, the guy who looked outside from an AM friend's year. Guy shrugged and said nobody was there when they opened the door. Anyhow, class continued. And when class ended, the students kept asking each other whether or not did they knock to play a prank. Both sides admitted that no one left the class during that time. It was all okay from that point on, but what disturbed both the sections most was the fact that no one from the lower year saw anyone appear on the window. The window was connected to the hallway and was quite low, so it's impossible that someone would successfully hide himself unless they were crawling. She also told me that they deleted their selfies after what happened. There were at least two people I know of who have died in my old high school. One kid fell, or got pushed, I don't remember which, down a flight of stairs and broke his neck. And there was a woodshop teacher who had a heart attack yelling at a kid for playing around with a saw or something. I was involved in a lot of after-school stuff. Musical band, chorus, and we even had a TV studio that broadcasted the school's sports and concerts to the town Wednesday nights and spent a good amount of time walking around that place at night. I don't think I ever saw any spoops outright, but the place had an eerie vibe at night and I'd sometimes hear faint knocking on doors to classrooms that were locked and empty, or see some slivers of light that shouldn't be there, like when going to turn the lights on in the dark auditorium. Even the teachers that spent time at school in the evenings, my chorus teacher and the guy in charge of the TV studio specifically, said they've seen and heard things in that school. The biggest stories I've heard there were from the TV studio teacher's kids. Both of these, allegedly, happened to his daughter. One time she was alone in the studio's control room at the end of the night, and one of the tape players began to play. She heard her grandfather's voice. He was the man who first set up the studio. And the voice started talking to her. The second story, I believe, happened when she was in junior high or early high school. People had always walked around the school on Wednesday nights during broadcasts to get snacks from the vending machines, order pizza, get stuff from our lockers, work on the auditorium stage, etc. But our TV studio teacher always wanted us to go in pairs or groups. Not that any of us didn't, anyway. That place was spoopy. Apparently, his daughter once started hearing noises and voices coming from the planetarium with the door unlocked and open. Apparently, she looked in and saw something. I don't know what. Her brother, who was telling me the story, didn't elaborate, possibly because she didn't tell him. I'm assuming she saw some apparitions, possibly of her grandfather, Needless to say, nobody walked around that place alone at night. TLDR, spoopy school where people died. I was there a lot at night and caught glimpses and heard faint noises. Girl who also spent a lot of time there, claimed to have, heard and saw spoops firsthand. TV studio, planetarium, what fucking school did you go to? It's really a pretty small school in the coal region of Pennsylvania. It's right next door to Centralia, actually, Mount Carmel. To be fair, the planetarium was pretty much never used, as far as I know, during my entire time there. There was a little while where they said they were going to fix it up, but nothing ever happened. The studio had a pretty long history, though. Pretty sure it was one of the first high school cable TV studios in the country. It's generally accepted that my high school was haunted. The band and choir teacher was convinced there was a ghost that lived in the band room that she named Harvey. One time I was in there with multiple people and the piano played on its own. I wasn't there for this next one in person, but a lot of people tell the story exactly the same. During ball practice, like half the lights in the gym shut off for no reason, most of the students joked that it was Harvey messing around with them. Coach asked who Harvey was. Kids explain. Coach says Harvey can kiss my ass and the rest of the lights go out at that very moment. Another funny thing is that apparently before the band choir teacher started working there, there was a secretary who believed there was a ghost in the building that she also thought was named Harvey. She would talk to him over the intercom whenever a classroom was empty and she would hear knocks and thus coming back from the empty room. The band choir teacher didn't know about this till a few years after she named him Harvey. Nobody really knows who he is, but the rumor is that he's a kid that died during a football game back in the 50s. I never had much experience, but I always felt uneasy when I was in the auditorium by myself. I love this kind of stuff. There was a creepy area in my secondary school, 
The art department took up the entire top floor of the old building, kind of nuzzled under the roof, and there was a section that used to be used for sixth form art students, but fell out of use for some reason. My art teacher at the time told me it couldn't be used now, as it only has the one exit so it didn't comply with fire safety regulations. I didn't even realize it existed until I got into sixth form myself, as it was beyond a few doors we never went through. But I had to fetch my old work for a portfolio, and it turned out my teacher stored it up there. It was through a dark, small connecting room with no lighting, and up another few stairs in a very narrow hallway. It was right on the roof at this point, and so the whole place was freezing, and a few small windows in the angled ceiling lit up the place dimly. There wasn't anything outright creepy about it, it was just a mess and really unusual. One room was like a library, but there were books just everywhere, likely left by the old teacher. There was graffiti all over the walls throughout. One room held most of the work while another had a desk just below a window and not much else. I'm also remembering the walls or ceiling had holes in some areas, and there was one of those loft attic door things locked up. Judging by its position, I think it led to the mechanism behind the clock on the front of the school. It was just not a nice place to spend time alone in. Felt like a weird remnant of the past in the school, because besides the work stored there, it seemed like the stuff that was there was just left to sit for years untouched. 2010. Was a junior in high school. There's a guy in the grade above me named David. He's on the baseball team and was a quiet tall dude. Was pretty funny and loved Edgar Allan Poe a lot. Had a few classes with him. Was by no means an outcast but certainly wasn't a popular kid. One day he gets it into his head to drink gasoline and douse himself with it and light a match. This somehow did not kill him in the minutes thereafter, is rushed to hospital. Basically beyond saving and has a few hours left to live. The school headmaster is told by parents and he rushes to hospital to say goodbye. He was a preacher as well so this wasn't too weird. David's last words are to the headmaster. No one ever liked me. In the days following his death, everyone that ignored him in life acted like they were his best friends to earn pity points. Why David? You know those bleachers a lot of gyms have that collapse to the wall and come out like steps when they need to be used? A few years before I entered my high school, one boy decided to skip class and hide underneath them. He took a nap there, and was apparently a heavy sleeper. Heavy enough that the sound of the bleachers being compacted didn't wake him up when someone hit the switch at the end of the day. The teacher was in a hurry, and left before the bleachers finished going into place. He got down the hallway and near the door before he heard screaming and the machine groaning from strain. The boy was crushed to death, and ever since then, people have seen a shadow of someone walking around underneath the bleachers that will disappear. The teachers kept hearing screaming every day when they retracted the bleachers, so stopped doing so and leaving them out all the time. Then it began starting up and collapsing and coming back out on its own, until they had to remove the moving parts. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time. Remember to check out the Odyssey page in the description for a second archive of the channel's videos. There's also a Rumble archive as a backup.